Hello and welcome to Them's Writing Words, a podcast discussing selected fan fictions from the world of pastel horse literature. My name is Scribbler and I will be your moderator today. Joining me for this discussion, we have Clever Hoops. Hey! Niall. Hello. Nick, aka Mindless Sketching, who I Hello. forgot to ask what you actually want to be referred to as in this. Sorry. Uh, uh, you can refer to me as Nick. That's, that's going to be the easiest. Okay. So, Nick. Hello. Skywriter. Happy to be here. Bloody Voices. Hello. And our fit picker, Ilya Leonov. Hello, everyone. You may notice we do not have a narrator today, so this podcast will entirely be carnage because the real moderator is missing. Right, today we're looking at the fanfic Rhythm by Ilya Leonov, as chosen by Ilya himself. And the synopsis, as Ilya is going to read it, is... Synopsis reads, shortly before the ceremony honoring Ponyville... Celestia hints to Twilight that there is a hidden nature to the forest of the ever-free. Later, both Celestia and Zakora will help her to discover the essence of that nature. Thank you. The story was published the 19th of May, 2019, and clocks in at 5,563 words. Okie dokie. So, the first part of this podcast will be spoiler-free. We will indicate where the spoilers are. I'm going to attempt to do chapters on this video as well, so if you want to get rid of the spoiler-free part, click on the bit below. To begin with, a word from the author, because this is the first time that we've had an author pick his own work for us to review, which is, um, it was a choice, Ilya. So a word from the author, what inspired you to write this fic, and what do you think the story is about, Ilya, you've said yourself? What inspired you to suggest it for them's writing words, given our checkered history of sometimes tearing things to pieces? Ilya? It is precisely for the reason that we tend to tear things to pieces. This is the first story I have ever written. And so I'm sort of a tinker. I like to build things, sometimes complex things, and then start pushing buttons and see what happens. So here I've constructed a story, and I have no idea in the world how good it is or bad it is or what the problems are, and I just sort of wanted to find out. Um, The way this thing was written, um, I was at work. I had an idea early in the morning, which we'll talk about in a bit, and uh, I just started typing at my desk at work. I can't type for shit, and the girl who sits across from me, who died a couple of years ago, actually, uh, she died the week of BronyCon, the last one everyone went to, and uh, I was unable to make the make it to BronyCon because I had to do the eulogy at her funeral. But she was sitting across from me, and I was just tick, 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 because I'm just a two-finger typer, you know. And she said, what the hell are you doing over there? Because I don't, I don't ever type that much. And so I just did that all day long and finished it that evening. And uh, it was kind of just a, an inspiration. One day it sort of wrote itself, and that was it. Well, that's actually a really touching story. I, I, I almost don't want to review anything after that. It's like, well, I don't want to touch it. It's Why? perfect, no, Dan. touch it, touch it, tear it, rip it. Let's see where it tears. <laughs> no, rip it and it. tear. Oh, no. It's not a buppet, Ilya. It's, just, it's a piece of your soul. I mean, all souls are boppets. We all get twisted, turned around. Come on. I got plenty of souls. <laughs> what is a boppet? What's a boppet? <laughs> oh, that's right. She's from across the pond. What were you saying? A a uh, do- she doesn't need to know. <laughs> no, now I do. Look, what what is a boppet? I'll look it up and I'll send her a link. Uh, a boppet was a, a a toy that came out. I think it was like early to the late nineties, early two thousands. It's essentially this plastic toy where it has different extrusions that come off of it that you do different things with so if it says like twist it there's a thing that you twist if it says bop it there's like a button thing that you hit and it's essentially this memory game that it throws out things you know in order and it gets longer and longer and you have to keep them in mind what you're supposed to do so it's like simon it's a menace to society yeah we we have nothing like that. I only know Simon because I think it popped up in an episode of Family Guy and Nostalgia Critic. Um, I don't have any memory of a boppet. Niall? 
yeah, essentially the bop it was the evolution of Simon Says. It just became three dimensional and you had to do things instead of just hitting the light. That's the best way to think of it. Right, okay. Um, just to ask Ilya to elaborate a little bit, what made you pick this particular topic for this story? Why did you pick effectively the nature of magic and these characters? Let me begin by asking the group, what do you think the story is about? Spoiler free. Uh, spoiler Rhythm. free, yeah. I mean, I don't know what's a spoiler <laughs> in this story. It doesn't have a climax or, you know, it sort of does. But there, is, there is one thing that we should probably keep for spoilers. Yeah. Yeah, probably like the nature of the whole thing. Well, the third character when she pops up. Oh, yeah, that too. So I might have to ask that question in the spoiler section? I think, I think so. You'd, you'd get a better answer. You would, you would get better answers out of us then. Yeah. Well, then okay, I can't so... tell you what inspired <laughs> me to write this fic at this point. Okay, then. See, that is an answer with a, an answer. Uh, okay, so tags then. Do we think it's accurate? Because it's just the one, just Slice of Life. So, Clever, do you think it's an accurate tag? Uh, I never looked at the tag, but in reading it, I was trying to classify it, and I felt Slice of Life um, was the category that I felt it fit most under. And I know we get into arguments about, you know, how many and which other tag. I'm not even aware of all the tags that exist. So I can't think of another one that better. I'm sure there might be some that might be adjacent to that. And that's all I'll say about that. Niall? Yeah, as I've said before, tags don't really matter to me, but this definitely fits Slice of Life. There's, like, to what Clever says, I don't know all of them. I'm sure there's something out there based around, like, magic or the nature of magic that would have fit. But, yeah, this works perfectly. Nick? Um, yeah, I'd have to agree with Clever. I I typically don't, like, look at tags when I'm reading stuff. But I think Slice of Life is what it fits best under, as uh, they described. But it, I was trying to also think when I was reading this story what else it could fit because it felt like there should be some other tag i just i don't know what that would be um but slice of life for the time not for the time being it, it does fit it especially from i would say are the are the two other main characters spoilers is that is that spoilers at this point uh the third one probably more than the the second one okay uh so i'm gonna say can i say celestia's in it i've already said it. celestia's in it <laughs> Um, I think- HOW DARE YOU! <laughs> no! Not the horse, bitch. Um, I think Slice of Life fits very well from Celestia, where she is in her role in the story, so. Skywriter? Yeah, Slice of Life pretty much down the- down the- straight down the lane. And bloody? Yeah, Slice of Life seems to fit it very well, but I also kind of agree that it seems like it should have something else, like, best I could describe it as calming. Normally, I don't like Slice of Life because I get bored, but this was just so relaxing and nice. See, I might have um, a suggestion for that other uh, genre. The thing is, the genre I have in mind doesn't seem to exist in Ponyfic. I've only ever seen it in relation to the other fandoms I'm in, and it's called Genfic, and it literally just means general fiction. Because um, Slice of Life, I always associate with just a slice of life, day-to-day -day life, whereas genfic is anything that doesn't fit into a specific genre. So something that is not quite adventure, not quite drama, not quite anything, but doesn't also, isn't just a slice of everyday life. And I would say this one's more genfic because there's an explanatory role to the narrative that I appreciated because that is absolutely my bag. I love shit like that. But I wouldn't call it slice of life. So my suggestion would be calling it genfic and bemoaning the fact that's not a tag we can use on film fiction. Just to, to spring off the relaxing comment that was made, I, I really could hear Ilya's voice um, <laughs> in the narration. And I had a hard time. I actually read the first paragraph out loud trying to imitate Ilya's cadence just to see if, 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 if I was in my head or if it made sense. And <laughs> I totally could hear you, Ilya, in, in like reading it. And I think that's 
actually fabulous um, for a writer to be able to get their voice out there, especially if this is the first story you've written. That's, I always find it really interesting because we review so many things and I, I'm assuming we all read books that we don't know the authors, so we don't know if they speak the way that they write. So it's always really interesting when you read something by someone you know and you can hear their voice all through the narration. I agree, by the way. I very much could hear Ilya in every step of this. Okay, so a brief summary of the story, spoiler free. Typically, I would ask uh, the fic picker to do this, but does anybody else want to have a go to kind of take the, the weight off Ilya there from trying to explain this without really explaining it? Oh, pass. hell no. Bloody, go ahead then. I said pass! Shit! Too late, I heard yes. God damn it! <laughs> Niall, I think he's going to take the bullet for you though. Niall? Yeah, sure. I'll I'll tackle it. Thank you. Uh, so, spoiler free. Uh, Celestia is going to Ponyville to celebrate the cel- uh, summer san- sun celebration <clears throat> because it's a wonderful place to be, and she feels like she wants to honor it. But she also has a greater subject that she wants to bring up to her student Twilight Sparkle. Uh, so she flies to Ponyville, and uh, while she's there, conducts the Uh, summer sun celebration and then from there she and her student enter the ever free to talk about certain mysteries based around alicorn powers and to uh you know dive into that to help twilight understand uh some of the new powers that she has as an alicorn that good yeah that's really good so then, uh, <laughs> our overall opinions of the story, if we haven't already given them. So I'm going to go backwards on this one. Bloody? I absolutely loved it. And like I said before, it's very calming and like just relaxing. Like it's perfect for like just playing some like uh, ambient music and just kind of reading through and relaxing. I love it. Skywriter? It's good. It's it's atmospheric. Um, I would say, and I think that this critique is already... Um, uh, or something that uh, Ilya already has acknowledged. Um, there's not a lot happening in this story. A lot happens, but uh, I don't think the characters really... The characters don't travel in any measurable way. We only learn things about the universe, which is great. It's fine. It's very colorful, and I love some of the figurative language, but I don't feel that there was a significant character journey that I could really sink my teeth into. So there's that. But, I mean, I enjoyed it, certainly. Nick? Um, So I could say... I really enjoyed reading this. I actually read it three different times. Um, I read it the first time just to kind of immerse myself in the story. um, Just as like a straight shot, just reading it, just to read it um, without really analyzing it. Because I really wanted to kind of understand the the narrative and stuff like that and what was happening in the story. Um, And I think it was Vladdy who said it. Um, It was, it's very atmospheric and in a good way. You kind of... It's relaxing, like we've discussed, um, and it's really easy to kind of just sit down and relax and kind of just, even though there's not much of a a journey that they go on, it's still very easy to kind of just sit down and relax and just watch and see the events unfold from uh, their perspective and... Um, it was just it was it was very nice to read, especially the first time, just kind of sitting down and reading it as what it is and not analyzing it that I did the second and third time so I could have stuff to say and not sound like an idiot. So yeah. Niall? <laughs> uh so yeah, my approach actually on all the fix that we've done is very similar to Nick's. I, I read each one of them multiple times and similar to the very the very things that everybody else has brought up like the tone is very relaxing and i felt like you really get a glimpse especially into celestia like part of my my favorite section is at the beginning when she's at the castle and she's contemplating the flight down and how much she enjoys it and that's in a way it's so personal to like we've all had those mornings where like you wake up and it's just a good morning maybe you're watching the sunrise or sunset and you're reflecting on things and how much you're enjoying what's to come 
Uh, and I felt like this fic captured that really well. But overall, I felt like the pacing was good and it was an enjoyable read all three times. So, yeah. Uh, clever. Um, well, a lot of what everyone else said. Uh, but I, I want to get a little more specific with you uh, without being spoiled. We're still spoiler free, right? As far as I know. For the time being, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, we're. The. Uh, the pros are wonderful. I, I know we're going to get into more of that specifically later, but I was immediately drawn in um, by the world building that you kind of set up at the beginning. And um, just that this is your first story and that you're able to immediately draw someone in um, was, was, yeah, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. You, you, uh, the, uh, the way that the story went, um, you know, I read it multiple times too, not, not, mostly because we were supposed to do this like a year ago. <laughs> and so I had to reread it a couple of times whenever we thought we were going to uh, do it again. And, um, you know, as was said earlier, you know, there's, uh, you know, there, there isn't the, the character development arc um, that, that some wrote on. I'd, but I, I don't want to focus on that right now. I, what I would like to say is that I, I loved it so much that um, I think my, I have written down here, my biggest um, critique would be either it's got to be longer or shorter. Um, and I would prefer longer. And, um, and I'm sure we'll talk more about that when we get into the spoiler free section, because everyone else has already kind of touched on things that I felt that it was, uh, it was relaxing. It was well said. And, and, and again, I can't stress enough that I can hear your voice um in it and i i I love that uh because to me that um having a character or not even a character but a personality in the writing and have that come through um is is to me the marker of of um a better storyteller i don't want to say like supreme story but 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 a better storyteller and that's what i've got to say about that for now and now i want to ask Ilya. Ilya, it's been nearly three years since you wrote this What's your opinion of your story now? Um, I think it's the greatest story ever written. It's better than the Bible. Um, all human <laughs> beings. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, YouTube just made totally. us unwatchable to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll base a, a, a cult of faith around it, for sure. Yes. Hey, look, if John Oliver can start his own church, we can start the Church of Leo. Praise the rhythm. Yep, I'll there we go. the rhythm. What what I'd really like to say is I I was surprised by all of you saying that you enjoyed reading the first part. And the reason I say that is because I submitted this thing to Equestria Daily, and <clears throat> they uh, they refused to accept it unless I changed the beginning because they said that sounds like a weather report. And so what? I just told yeah so i just told him mm, no i don't need my story in equestria daily then it's not that i thought it was that good but that was the way i wrote it i mean to me that's foreshadowing is what i was trying to do there so yeah i mean so i was really pleased that you all enjoyed the first part there i'm glad you stuck to your guns on that one because Way back in the day, in I think 2013 or 14, I submitted um, Truth Be Told to them and they said they wouldn't accept it unless I took out a huge description that I have of a hospital. Um, and I was really proud of that, but I took it out to, to get it on the site and to this day I regret doing it. So I'm really glad that you stuck to yours. Uh, I'm not saying that the story requires no revision. As a matter of fact, uh, there were no, extens but, extensive but revisions in in the story as far as punctuation and paragraphs i didn't know a thing about that um shadow of sickness helped me a great deal with that as did present perfect but i was unwilling to make any changes in the story itself because it's the way i wanted it written and you know if good or bad and that's that's the story yep i we stand we stand okay so uh to be honest, I think we've covered tone and pacing and stuff, so I think we're going to go into spoilers from here. So, anybody listening, we are going to spoil... It's not a plot-driven story, it's more of an atmospheric and explanatory story, but we're going to spoil the thing that explains. So, Ilya, 
do you want to explain the story with spoilers now? Absolutely. Then I will once again ask the crowd, what do you think the story is about? About the rhythm of nature and how it's kind of connected to all of them, I'd say. I felt it was a, an explanation of how the Everfree became the Everfree and an exploration of how magic sort of works in, in this universe. We're, um, sorry, or are we going to give the overview so everybody knows what we're talking he, about before we get into it? I'm, I'm, I'm going to give a complete description yeah. of the story in a minute, but I just want to ask this question first. Yeah, Ilya's asking um, us yeah. what, are, what we think the theme of the story is before he explains the, the plot. Oh, okay, my bad. Sorry, Clever. No, uh, that's Go okay. ahead. So that's, I mean, when I, when I tried to find the heart of the story, that's, and also giving us a bit of a glimpse into um, Zakora uh, and how she fits in with all that. So it, it, like to me, when I, when, when I read it, it felt like you got this idea um, about how the Everfree came to be and related it to why Zakora is you know why why she's always talking in 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 metered rhyme and that it all kind of just it felt like you had an epiphany one day that this is how it, it works and then you sort of expanded on that and then that you know that somehow backwards explained you know um gave a backstory to zakora and the forest and, and everything else that's that's what i gathered out of, out of it um i i could be gravely mistaken but that's that's what i got Iliad, is that accurate to what you, your authorial uh, intent? What Clever said is very darn close. Um, there was a little blurb they give you, author's note underneath the story. It began as a rant on why, I mean, on, and not only on, not so much on how um, Zakora speaks in rhymes, but the fact that some people miss the rhythm when they write for Zakora. So I wanted to explain why Zakora speaks in rhymes. And that was the, the main um, crux of what began the story. And I consider that the meaning of the story, although all the other things are, are meaning as well. Um, I didn't have much of a, a outline. I don't do outlines, but I had a sort of a, what I call a focusing device. I was trying to focus down on Sakura, so I started with uh, the universe, comments about the universe and rhythm, and then down to Equestria, then to Canterlot, then to Ponyville, and then down to the Everfree, and finally ending up at Sakura's cottage to just sort of focus the whole thing. Um, so it's really about Sakura's rhyming and what that means to the rest of the world. Do we need, I guess we need a, do we need a better plot synopsis? I think something that a little more clarity for our listeners. Okay. Like just directly plot point by plot point, what happens? Cause we have, we understand the theme, but what exactly the conversation that happens between Celestia uh, and Twilight? Okay. So it, it starts off, like I said, um, with Celestia thinking about the rhythm of the universe and how things happen on a repeating process and how comforting it is to her to have that repeating process. And then she goes down to Ponyville and there's quite frankly, just a bit of distraction there. Um, but I did it to sort of establish the cohesive nature between Equestria, Candlelot and Ponyville. Um, and then right before the ceremony that they have, which is not, really a summer sun celebration so much as it's a special ceremony honoring Ponyville for its role in all the events of Equestria. Uh, shortly before that ceremony, Celestia hints to Twilight that um, perhaps they should talk about the Everfree and how it operates. Um, and so after the celebration, they go down um, and there's a sort of an intimate exchange that occurs between Twilight and Celestia about why the Everfree exists, why it has the boundaries it has. Um, and it has to do with Luna. Um, when they were in the middle of the battle, 
and Luna was expending energy. Um, she was banished to the moon right in the middle of casting a spell. And the spell went to the boundary of its power and bounced back. Normally, it would return to the pony who cast it. The pony was gone. So it sort of uh, began a resonance. And that resonance over a thousand years, even though Luna returned and took our magic back, the resonance was still there. And all of the Everfree is powered by that resonance. And it's dangerous. And so through a very intimate exchange with Twilight, uh, Celestia gets her to trust her. And that trust takes the form of asking Twilight to transfer all of her magic to Celestia. Because only if she does that, only if she is willing to do that, um, will this spell work. She starts to transfer it, and within a few seconds, it comes back to her. Then it establishes a rhythm. And it's the same rhythm that the Everfree Forest has. And it's a rhythm Twilight has known all her life, but wasn't aware of it. And suddenly she understands that rhythm and all about alicorn magic and its permutations throughout the universe. Um, <clears throat> and then they go to find Zakora, who lives just inside the Everfree Forest, um, because Zakora has something to add, and Twilight's puzzled. What? She can't use alicorn magic. And Celestia assures her no, but she uses the rhythm in a different way. So they get to the cottage, and they talk, and Zakora recites what is sort of an epic poem of her traveling from uh, Zebrica, Zebrica to the Everfree and learning to cope with the magic in the forest through the rhythm that she has established through her language, and that all zebra, zebras do not speak in rhyme, but she has to for her very existence. And that's basically how the story wraps up. And I suppose that's a synopsis. I think that's a very thorough synopsis. Okay, then. So, moving on to the next point. Characterization. Do we feel it's accurate for Twilight, Celestia, and Natalie Zakura? Would anybody in particular like to go first on this? Clever? Yeah. Um, for the most part, yes. But there are a couple of times in the text that I kind of was, I, I even like circled and I was like, I don't think they'd say that. Um, or they wouldn't say it that way. Like, I'll, I'll give a for instance, as soon as you can hear my paper shuffling. Hang on. All right. Like, um, there's a line here uh, that says, <clears throat> Celestia is supposed to say it. But a special friendship saved us from that, did it not? And all I could say is, it sounds more like Luna. You know, um, or when Twilight uh, says, oh, how I remember that. And I was like, I, I don't know if she'd say that. Uh, it, but for the, I mean, for the most part, it, it, it comes off, it's just a couple of little places here and there where I, I get taken out. Zakora is beautifully written. Um, I... Uh, I have a point about that, but it, it, it comes later. But um, otherwise, uh, yeah, I felt it was well done. Uh, Skywriter? I would say this is a very, um, this feels like a very early season, or early series, Twilight. Um, it, it's hard to say what Twilight's character arc is exactly. It's not exactly consistent throughout all the seasons of the show. Um, but the sort of uh, the sort of glowing admiration, almost deifying Celestia, um, is a very season one, season two sort of Twilight. Um, and I'm not sure exactly where the story is set uh, in, along that journey, temporally speaking, uh, in the canon. Uh, it just feels like this is a this is a young Twilight before she's uh, gotten uh, more confident about her own place and i mean it's obviously that's the case i guess it's post alicorn twilight so um but yeah this seems like a an unsure alicorn twilight rather than a late season late series twilight i mean i i think it's pretty good uh, i i would echo the the concern that some of it was, some of the dialect was a little formal for the style of the show but it wasn't in, in a distracting manner for me personally Niall? yeah 
pretty much echoing the same thing. Uh, there, a little bit of the language there didn't quite fit, but other than that, it it seemed on on point. Um, and then to Skyrider's uh, thing of where Twilight is, I I took it as like pretty soon after she's gained Alicorn Hood. So yeah, probably between like season three, season five. She still has that starry-eyed look whenever she she meets Celestia, but she's at least to the point where she's not stammering over herself all the time. So she's somewhat established, but not quite where she is, like like you said, later season. But uh, yeah, I felt other than that, it was really good. I really love the depiction of Sakura, uh, and I think everything that was written in Sakura's voice was really, really well done, which I, I feel like a lot of people struggle with. Um, and so, Ilya, you did a great job on it, in my opinion. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Nick? Um, so I also kind of had the kind of establishing when the story... When when did you imagine this story was taking place, Ilya, as far as after um, Twilight has been, you know, alicornized and, you know, we love that. Um, but when did you imagine this story taking place exactly after that event in the show? I don't have a specific time. Um, sort of not too long after. I mean, because how long can can you go as an alicorn without being taught the principles? So I think it was sort of soon after that. Okay. Did you say in between season three and season four? I don't even remember what season she became an alicorn. End of season three. Because three. Uh, we, we got the Equestria Girls movie as the segue between the two of them. Um, it just... It, not to get too detailed uh, detailed analysis of canon it seems like early season five uh because i think the the friendship castle itself was mentioned as a as an item so this is after tree library uh in friendship castle territory which is the one thing where it felt like if we were all the way in season five this seems like a very a, a very young twilight to be a season five twilight um but that's all that's a good point hmm. nick did you want to carry on yeah, so the reason I asked that is because I really enjoyed um, kind of how green and how young Twilight felt as coming into her coronation as a princess and um, being an alicorn. And and I think it's a theme you portray really well throughout the entire narrative as well that um, alicorn magic is kind of this universal thing versus I don't know what unicorn magic would be um but that it's different and it kind of has this a quote unquote different rhythm but um it's it's beautifully done to where twilight is kind of not understanding how it's kind of she doesn't understand like how much is entailed with being an alicorn and that's part of her just being coordinated and not understanding how things are working and still getting used to the fact that she's a princess and she has you know subjects and stuff like that um and especially with you know she has a, this is her first ceremony in ponyville and stuff like that but i really enjoyed how um curious she was and her kind of because she's not dumb um and so celestia kind of wanting to teach her because she doesn't know, but still leading her in a path to where Twilight can put the pieces together herself um, is something I really enjoyed about the story. And then, so yeah, that's... Twilight, I think, was the best written out of all of them, personally. Um, not The Korra was beautifully written as well, and I'm, I know you, you said in the bottom that you set out to purposely write for Zakora because people had a hard time you didn't like how people were writing her rhymes and that she has this certain cadence to the way she talks um and i know that's what you set out to do but i think all of them were very beautifully written so just as an insert i'm fairly certain Zakora speaks in iambic pentameter correct me if i'm wrong on this Ilya. what was the question no no no. i'm putting forward the idea because i cannot remember it's a rhythm at this point. Good Is lord, I'm terrible uh, with those <laughs> names of poetry <laughs> styles. I can't even tell you. <laughs> okay, so uh, if anybody would like to correct me, Skywriter. Uh, I think it's pretty pretty clearly iambic, but it's not always pentameter. I stand up corrected. Uh, speaking of then, Vladdy, would you like to give your opinions on the characterization? Yeah, I thought they were actually really done very well. 
And just like uh, you wanted to do, Sakura was done absolutely beautifully and definitely had more of the rhythm she has in the show versus other fanfics. I liked how Celestia, while I'm still being professional when she needed to be and the teacher and all that, she was trying to be more relaxed and show kind of Twilight just to be chill. We're all alicorns here sort of thing. And and also thought Twilight was written really well because, yeah, she has gotten more confident probably by that point. She's not stammering in front of Celestia all the time. But whenever something new is brought up, she does go back to that, like, curiosity and youthful, like, awe and everything. So it kind of makes sense she'd fall back to that when something mystical is brought up and new. So I thought they were all brilliantly written. Very well done. Okay. So our impressions of the pro style. How does this story read? Is it trying to achieve any particular tone? And if so, how well does it achieve this? Would anybody like to volunteer to go first? Lovey? Um, definitely does seem to uh, achieve the whole rhythm thing, of, especially with the whole uh, showing Sakura's thing and how she, can, she needs to speak in a particular rhythm and stuff. That's done very well. And, and also when talking about the whole connecting with nature thing, it does uh, do that very well as well, especially in that intro, just the whole everything's connected sort of thing. Very nicely done. Never? Sorry. No, <laughs> Sorry, no. I think you were, I thought you wandered yeah. off. I, no, I, I, I did. I just, uh, yeah, computers. Anyway, uh, <laughs> damn you, technology! Um, that I, was I, a I, scarily accurate Christopher Lloyd impression just then. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll add them to the list. You, you were just absolutely Doc Brown from Back to the Future for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> Marty! Marty! <laughs> it's your kids, Marty! Yes! Oh, God, that's good! That's good. That is good. It is, isn't it? That's insane. <laughs> oh, no, he's found you a new family. He accidentally discovered of... another one. Yes! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to talk. I think this is the best place to talk about this. Uh, in terms of, uh, I think I have it written down as something about a question of rhythm, but this makes more sense to talk about it here. I, so I, uh, I want to echo everything that's been said. Ilya, I love you, but I'm going to give you some critique. Yay! Gonna, finally. Yeah, I'm going to give you some critique. Um, I do like how you've written Zakora. I want to make that abundantly clear. The um the opportunity I think you have is that I uh, there are moments in this epic poem uh, that you have her uh, speak uh, that are not quite right <laughs> from the sense of a rhythm standpoint, which because of how important rhythm is to the story, I feel like it needs that this part actually needs to be perfect. Um, and I don't often say that unless I'm talking about my own work, that things need to be perfect because perfect is the enemy of good. And but because of the focus of it, I, I think it does. And there are moments when even I'm reading this aloud, that although you've done an amazing job going for as long as you did, committing to the rhyme and, and the meter, but there, there are moments, it makes, it makes the moments where it doesn't work stand out all the more, if that makes any sense. And if you're like, what is he talking about? Well, uh, I went through um, last night and I actually went and measured all the syllables um, and, and did all that weird ass writing that you do to, you know, for stress and whatnot. And, um, in, in the different stanzas that you have written, there are times where they, it, it changes from one line to the next. And I don't mean from one stanza to the next. I mean, from one line to the next, and it takes you out of the rhythm. And there are, um, there was one, um, where I really felt that because of where the word that rhymed was and where the emphasis of the statement was or the sentence was that it, it didn't, um, hit where it should have. And it led me to say, well, other than playing around with the syllables, something else that you may wish to consider is to reorganize, um, the text in that space so as to emphasize for the reader, uh, the rhyming words so that even if it's not like a period where there should be a pregnant pause to have that emphasis, 
that maybe the rhyming word ends on the line. And even if you, you know, there's more room for it, that, that it, it has the form that makes you see the rhyme and, and, and then and reinvent, re-emphasizes that rhythm. I don't know if I'm saying that in a way that makes sense. You are. As a matter of fact, I struggled with um, that part of it. I, I do feel that I can speak it and it works perfectly in rhythm, but it probably needs some sort of punctuation. And I really didn't know how to do that to make it hit the way it needs to hit. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, an emphasis is on a syllable of the word that you normally wouldn't have it on to make it work. Yes. And that, I just didn't, I didn't know how to get that across. I, I can I, do it reading it, but I, I don't know how to do it uh, I, writing it. I actually felt that if you, um, like, uh, I, I don't have an ex uh, example, like, right off the top of my head. But let's say that you had, like, two words like prize and eyes. Um, now, in, in the stanza where they are, prize has a comma right next to it, which makes you pause, right? And eyes has a period right next to it, which makes you pause. But there are other examples where the, the rhyming couplet, um, like, um, uh, later on, I think... Uh, Oh, where'd it go? Ah, I, it's there. But um, where you you don't you don't have that emphasis, um, there isn't that punctuation to make you stop. And so, if you're just reading it, not knowing where the emphasis should be, it 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 actually seems to come out of nowhere, and it doesn't hit properly. So, my suggestion would be, is wherever that word that's supposed to be emphasized is going to be rhymed later, um, regardless of whether there's punctuation or not. Um, do a return right at that spot so that the eye stops on that word. Um, you don't need to add punctuation so much as you just need the eye to stop. And I think that would fix that part of the problem. Um, and the only other issue is, is, is just you're going to have to go back and just make sure that all of the rhythm beats um, hit uh, uh, just because when I was reading it, I could actually feel like that, that's too long or no, that's too short or that doesn't quite hit quite right um, on the right number of syllables for it to because there's a there's a very distinct pattern that you've set up. And so when you deviate from it, it it um, it really sticks out, um, at least to me, it did. Uh, the other th I mean, you can explain it away by saying that the other free forest doesn't have a you know, it's not a metronome. Um, but the problem is, is that the, the deviancies, the way they come out, just really stick out. So I, 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 I don't know. I mean, it's your story. You do what you want with it. I'm, I'm giving you some feedback on that. Well, I appreciate the feedback. And I, I am really naive when it comes to how to set up returns and punctuation. So I'm not good at that. Um, also, a couple other points. Um, in my, I feel like written poetry is kind of dead. Um, it it really needs to be read aloud, um, and so I set it up to do that. Um, I can't offer anything else in my defense other than that. I think you you shouldn't need to feel that you need to defend Ilya. I just you know if you. If you think I'm I'm off my rocker, then you're just, not you know. off your rocker. You're absolutely dead on. And this is something I struggled with when I was uh, typing it all up. How, how am I going to get the reader to understand? Some of them are self-evident. Uh, some of them aren't. And I didn't know how to do that. But first story I've ever written. Does anybody else uh, want to speak there? Skywriter? Yeah. Um, I don't want you to take this the wrong way because uh, it does... It, in, in the most generous of all possible terms, I am not this was a one night story. This definitely felt like a story where you had a flash of inspiration. You want you had an, a single crystalline idea that you needed to communicate to your audience and everything else is kind of like, how do I get to that? How do I get to be in service of this idea? Um, I would say that if you wanted feedback on the story and this is where we have some unfortunate choices that have to be made is that there are some things in the story that probably could have used to be ruthlessly edited down if you wanted to have a really honed edge to the um 
to the to the message that you're trying to do. I'm mean, one of my favorite bits of the story image wise is exhaustively detailing the Ponyville celebration that you've done. There's some beautiful imagery in that one. I loved it. Probably shouldn't have been in the story. It wasn't in service to your narrative. It didn't do anything except for draw away from the point. It was like I felt like, and this is, of course, this is my literary opinion, so you know, take it with any kind of grain of salt. I'm not a genius by any stretch of the imagination, but what it felt like to me, to me, is that um, we have we have we have a, a lovely scene with Celestia setting the tone, talking about the primary theme, which is to say rhythm, and the feeling of um, of being in tune with the the cycles of the world. She comes down to Ponyville and says to Twilight, "Hey, let's talk after this." And then there's a lovely scene with the ceremony. And then they we come out of that scene and it says, okay, let's now let's talk about this. It's like, it, it's, it's, it's a, I guess it sort of, it, it gets into the purpose of writing. I mean, it, it's a beautiful word picture. If you want, if you want your, if you want your, 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 your art, as it were, when you're writing to communicate a picture like you've just painted something on the wall i have no complaints um if this is in service to an to and we've already discussed that the narrative is a little bit scant because there's not a real character arc but if we're saying if everything should be in fact service to the theme then that scene probably wasn't in service to the theme because it was beautiful but it just felt like a digression from where we were going. And I mean, it was a breather. It was, it, it was, it was a breather. It was a pause. And like I said, lovely, you know, lovely imagery, but I felt like it, 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 uh, I guess this, when, when, when we talked about earlier about the point of whether it should be longer or shorter, um, that is a part that I would just as soon have seen in a different story that would be more, that could be focused on that aspect of things. Uh, rather than in a digression from the point that you were originally trying to make with the story. And I think that's something that an edit pass might have cleaned up uh, if you were ruthlessly editing it. I, I'd like to just add um, on to that in that um, I had that whole section outlined as, is this important? And exactly what was uh, what was just said. And, um, and again, what was just said is, you know, should it be longer, should it be shorter? If you're wanting to focus just on this idea of explaining the rhythm, I kind of agree that that this takes away from that focus because it leads me to wonder, um, you know, what, how does this fit in with with the overall theme and does it service it? And I think it could if the story was much longer. Um, and I'll leave it at that for when we talk about that. Uh I actually have to raise an objection to that. I actually think it fits really well because the whole ceremony itself of like having one candle light another and another and showing how that fire spread is it's very similar to like how like the rhythm of the magic and stuff like Luna's magic um, went and touched all the lives and everything in the Everfree Forest. Um, um, it's kind of the same sort of metaphor with the fires and like how it represents the friendship connecting and stuff. It's just a different kind of thing instead of the friendship, it's the magic and stuff. And I, I think it does fit it very well in that sort of metaphor and lives connecting and such. Niall, would you like to have an opinion? Yeah, so I, I kind of coming at this from both sides. So I know in, in the summary I had earlier, I said summer sun celebration and, and messed that up. Uh, but it's because that seemed to fit and and that's what i was thinking with this and i agree with vladdy i i think that that scene was impactful for for the same reason she said it's like that cascade effect and i could see a little bit how it feels like oh it's it's just a thing to get you there but you didn't have to do that to get there but the other reason why and i guess subconsciously i just put summer sun celebration every time i read it is because that's kind of you know the yearly cycle thing that it, it celestia i felt like that was tied in with with this you know ebb and flow like every year there's this reminder of hey you know the sun rises and sets every day the moon comes around and 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 sets every day 
uh, it's it's kind of like the celestial level of this cycle and this pulse and this thing that goes on and on and on. But if if I don't know if there was any uh, feedback, I'd say I think that making it the summer sun celebration rather than just some random celebration that it, you're doing would actually help emphasize this more. And I also feel like that would also explain better why she would want to have that chat with Twilight then. It's like, look, we just had this this symbolization of the thing I want to talk to you about. Um, but yeah, I, I still feel like that that is a scene that could work. I could also see it being cut out. Like, you could easily have it be cut out and just have her flying down from Canterlot just to go talk to Twilight and not involving the rest of Ponyville, and it could work either way. Um, but yeah, that's my two cents on it. I feel, I still think it works and, uh, that's it. Okay. Um, I, I, I agree. Uh, I think that the, I don't think, I mean, it could be cut. I mean, I think we could also script doctor a, a scene like that. My major problem with it thematically, um, was that, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the celebration scene starts small and gets big and then it ends. Um, if I were going to keep that scene, I would like it to be symbolically, cyclical i would like it to show the ebb and the flow that we see that's the thematic because as it is a scene where many where a single candle lighting many candles is entirely expansive but we never see it, the festival wind down as such we never see it we never see it contract we never see it come back in and if we had an additional scene uh at least or at least reference something that we can see that the festival ebbs and flows just like a, just like the rhythms of the world then that scene would fit in better if I'm trying to script doctor this. Nick? Um, so I there's there's parts to everybody's kind of critiques that I I I would have to disagree with what you said, Niall. I think that it being a celebration of its own, and I think it was called the celebration of light, is correct me if I'm wrong, Ilya. Um I thought it worked really well as its own separate um event as opposed to the sun celebration because and there's parts where i felt like it fit in and i feel like you were you were on the right track with it and i was when i read the story i kind of read it at first and i was like well why should i care about this um but i wish that it had been integrated a little bit more with the whole with the whole ebb and flow of things because I do think that it being its own event where right we the whole story especially with the everfree kind of talks about how there's this one thing can kind of have an influence on others even if we don't know it um and we visibly sometimes can't see that and then as opposed to with the candle lighting ceremony where twilight's like here spike has a candle and i want you guys to light your candles from his candle and then go out and light other candles with that and i know it, it's a sim it's a it's symbolic of how friendship works and how they want to spread friendship to equestria but i think it also really had this nice underlying message of how one thing even though we can't visibly see it affects a lot of things and we're kind of ignorant to that sometimes um but at the same time the i wish it had more of an integral part to the the latter half of the story where we really get into the um kind of reasoning behind the way um the everfree and really magic itself is just the way it behaves in the world of equestria um so that was my take on that Anyone want to respond? I I have a couple of points to make. Go ahead. Uh, Skyrider is absolutely right. The scene feels like it's shoehorned in. I did have a purpose for it, but I think I could have written it better. The point was that Ponyville is the last line of defense before you get to the Everfree. I don't know where it actually is geographically but in my mind it there's nothing really between ponyville and the everfree and so ponyville being the last line of defense to the everfree led twilight to ask why the everfree has the border that it does that was where i was trying to lead and i think i did it a little bit clumsily 
Um, I wouldn't disagree. I kind of got that from the way the conversation went, that the, the Everfree has this mysterious border. I, I would say that that point was made, but if that was the whole setup for the sun celebration, um, then it, 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 it didn't necessarily deserve the space that it got unless you could work it into the overall theme like script doctoring kind of like skywriter was suggesting i think that there are ways to do that because it's a beautifully written scene um and i don't necessarily want to take it out uh like i've said before and i'll keep repeating i'd i'd actually like to see this uh, should i just talk about how i'd like to see this get bigger or should we wait for yeah. that i would also no, like to see ahead. it bigger so yeah okay well i'll talk a little bit about how i i want to see it get bigger um I, I would, I actually would like you to sort of change your genre, to be honest, if it was going to be bigger, rather than slice of life, um, as what's been mentioned before, I'd like to see a character journey um, in this. And if you really want to make it about Zakora, I mean, you have lots of options here, you could, you could make it about Twilight, you can make it about Celestia, you can make it about Zakora. But I would suggest that you pick one. And you really tell um, the story uh, more from that person or that pony's point of view, uh, in, in the sense that we start off with this beautiful, um, narrative talking, you know, in Celestia's head. And, uh, there's so much where you can, you can take that. Like, if you want to make this more about Celestia, you, you absolutely can, you know, like, because it made me wonder, you know, this, this being who is, who is, you know, is for all intents and purposes, immortal, you know, how, how has that affected her transcendental understanding of her world? You know, you might imagine that she'd be more detached. Why isn't she? And it, does that tie into her understanding of the rhythm of magic? And there's lots you can do with that. Um, but that didn't, from your explanation earlier, you, you didn't really want to look at that. That wasn't really what the focus was. The focus was Sakura. So knowing that now, um, in this epic poem that you've written, I, I almost, um, want to forego all of this preamble with Twilight and, and Celestia. And I, I, you know, if, if you really want to tell the story of Zakora, I, I, I'd almost like the story of, of, of Zakora. Um, and this, uh, and I know you want to explain the Everfree Forest and her relationship to it, but I think that can be done, um, in in a in a in a different way where we we start with a focus on on her or the uh preamble to zakora is 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 cut much much shorter and we spend much more time on on perhaps flashback or i i don't know what um exactly like i want to be clear i'm not i'm not the i'm not a great author but i feel like focusing more on that and making it more about her journey into coming to understand the everfree and her 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 um her change in character to survival uh, in the Everfree uh, is, a, is a wonderful story that perhaps that hasn't been told before this, um, and that 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 itself could deserve that. I uh, so I, I would I want to read more of your work, Ilya, and I think that if you had a tighter focus on a particular character and and carried their arc, I think what would end up happening is you would have it would be a different story in the sense that it would no longer be slice of life and it would change its focus but it would still tell i i think the idea that you were trying to tell in a way that i think would be um even more engrossing even more at stake uh for the person reading and um i i i hesitate to use the word better but i i i think um that I, don't hesitate I, use the word better I, I i think it could be a little better that way um I, it I, could um but that's that's uh you know without without getting into a bunch of nitty-gritty just just as an overview that that's that's what i would like to see done with it um one other two other little comments um if you decide to make it smaller um and focus on more of a uh, other you know I think you can do that too. And I think with a little bit of ruthless editing um, and a little bit of script doctoring, I, I think you could get uh, just the story in a form that's much more easy to recognize as it is now uh, into uh, something that 
um, has a bit of a better, for lack of a better word, a bit of rhythm uh, to the story itself. And uh, some of that's already been mentioned um, on how to do that. One of the things that uh, was an opportunity that if you were going to keep the story um, more, you know, in the way that it is, but just maybe edit it down a little bit, is in the uh, scene with Twilight um, trusting Celestia, uh, the, uh, there, there seems to be a lot of buildup in there that she has to give her an entire trust. Like this has to be completely trusting. And um, I, I do agree that giving up all your magic is a big deal. And, and how you explain it, there's a gravitas, actually, there's a gravitas to everything you say, Ilya, which is why I love listening to you, period. But, uh, but it doesn't come out on the page. It's just kind of a, it, it almost feels anticlimactic. It's like, well, she took some of her magic and then it came back. And I almost wanted something to go a little wrong or to at least have Twilight have some anxiety in, in that moment. Um, or, or to, to, you know, to, to be led. I, I wanted, I wanted something in that moment to warrant this, this, um, this very clearly worded and expressed, like, you've got to trust me, um, moment. So I felt like there was an opportunity there, uh, to, to, you know, for, to create a little more interest in that because it's kind of a, and then it was done. And it was like, well, I, I wanted a little more out of that. There was, I think there could have been a bigger payout there. And, um, I have the other thing I wanted to suggest, Ilya, is you've got a sub, you know, or maybe it's a chapter or a subtitle to everything a rhythm. I would like you to consider this. Uh, I want keep that to everything a rhythm or how Tia got her groove back. That that is what I'd like you to suggest. You know, just uh. I'm too old for that. I think everything you've said is almost one hundred percent perfect. This story reads like it was written by someone who had never written a story before. And I don't say that facetiously. It really does. I've written thousands of essays. I know how to write. I know how to write uh, descriptions. I know how to write uh, treaties on certain scientific things. But I have no idea how to create a story, how to construct it, what to leave in, what to leave out. So I think you've hit the nail on the head here. It's just, just pieces and points that some need to be elaborated on. Some need to be thrown out. Um, <clears throat> it's almost precisely what I was expecting. This is a story written by someone who's never written a story. Uh, and these are the sorts of criticisms I was looking for. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Niall? Yeah. So. I didn't know where else to bring this up, so I'm, I'm bringing it up here, just a short point. Since this is about Zakora, one thing that was going through my mind, especially when I'm reading that epic, which I, I loved, by the way, is I almost wish there had been a point where instead of just reading the epic, like, I don't know, she breaks form and she talks like she did before she got to the Everfree. Uh, and, and this might, like I said, be a completely sad thing. It might be another story, but I would have loved to have had Zakora talk like pre Zakora coming to the Everfree so that you can see, I, I guess, like that explorative nature that she had. Cause the, the thing I got from the epic is like, she's a badass. Like she's getting on ships. She's going across the sea. She has this mighty thirst for, for learning about magic. She's probably breaking a bunch of norms and rules. And like, that is the one thing that if I, if I realized I wanted anything out of reading this story is like, I want to know more about that pre Zakora and how she got to this point. And once again, I don't know how well that could have been put into this one. But if it couldn't have been inserted, I I definitely would have loved to have seen like a follow on fic just specifically on that. And I just wanted to say that, like, I think since your focus was Zakora, you definitely did an amazing job of like making me think about her differently from what I saw on the show and wanting to explore her character differently. And I really appreciate that, Ilya. Thank you. I would have no idea how to write Zakora, though, without poetry i don't i don't have a feel for her 
I guess she's adventurous, brave, but other than that, I don't know how I'd write without poetry. Bloody? The, the beauty would be that you could do whatever you wanted. Uh, if I had anything I would add, um, it, it, it would be one little critique about um, um, with how good um, the descriptions are of like um, Celestia at her balcony and then flying down and into Twilight's room and all those descriptions, the ceremony and even Sakura's house, but the transition then between um, after the ceremony and into the Everfree Forest did feel a bit flatter than all the other ones where they were like a beautiful flow. That one kind of just went flat to jump right to the discussion. So if um, you're going to have a bunch of beautiful descriptions, it should be a bit more consistent when moving into a new area. Which does segue quite nicely into our next point. That, which I think you brought up earlier, which is, yeah, this is my storytelling. Point. The one thing that I really expected more than anything else was critique of my description because I've never felt like I write description well enough. It's, and it's just like you just said, um, here's some description. Here's a new scene. Where's the description? That's sort of the way I felt I fell flat quite a bit. Can I, can I add something before we move to the next point? Of course. Um, as a critique if you were going to rewrite this i think it'd be really at least personally um i think it'd be very beneficial if you chose a character to tell the point of view of the story from specifically so have a first person point of view um and immediately my mind goes to twilight just because i i would like to see the story focused on zakora but then it kind of trails back to the whole having a character go through a journey which i also think um, if you were to rewrite this, and I do agree it should be longer, I think. I think um, that way we can explain Zacor ex explore Zakora's um, her story a little bit more and kind of learn about it as Twilight is also learning about it um, through Twilight's mind. Since um, while we are learning about Zakora, Zac not Zakora. Twilight's kind of, like I mentioned before, she's very green. She doesn't truly understand the power that she has and the power of the world. Um, so I think it'd be really beneficial if it was told from uh, one of the specific characters' point of view, as opposed to just kind of a narrator's point of view. Okay, well, Ilya, um, description in storytelling. Now, it says plus C and R. You want to explain that one because I don't quite understand that note. Okay, I've been sitting here for the past five minutes trying desperately to remember what C and R is. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it Token in. Token rum. <laughs> I can't remember what it was supposed to represent. Crown Royal. Well, to begin with, I thought it was like God, Clever I Moon. Wish. I was like, what? Clever I got some Black Labels in shirt. I was thinking Rumba. it was like critiques um, and some. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I know what it is. Crisis and revolution. Resolution. I don't... Um, uh, 5B means to, means to point out that I feel like I'm weak in description. And I felt like there was insufficient crisis and resolution. And that's what I was going to say. Um, okay, Did it would, need crisis like, and resolution? I mean... I'm uh, going to give over to other people on this one. Niall? So... First off, like when when you you had description on here, what I was thinking is like describing where they are, where they're going. Which I agree, there wasn't a lot of that. Um, but I think that the focus of the the discussion was enough to bring it along. Like some writers write very descriptive; they explain every single little thing around them. Looking at you, Scribbler, um, and some some don't. And I think it worked well without extra descriptions. As far as like crisis and resolution, I, I kind of go into the point earlier that I, I believe it was clever that brought it up when Twilight is giving all of her magic and there wasn't any oomph. I, I do agree with him there. And I feel like that's where you could have put that. The crisis is she needs to feel, I don't know, like fear. There was like this build up, like you're going to have to give me all of this magic in your body, but there's no expectation that that's a dangerous thing there's no expectation and if you had drawn that out a little bit and like gone in phases of like she starts to give her magic and it feels fine and then the further she goes into it 
Maybe she starts to feel cold or it feels a little dangerous, but she knows that she has to focus on the trust for Celestia. And then she gets to a point where, you know, she feels like, oh, I haven't done this before. This is really scary. And then there's this light of it popping back into her and starting the wave. And it's a new sensation, which is where the fear comes in. And it's something that she thought was more dangerous because she never experienced that as a unicorn. Uh, I feel like that's where you could have put more of that in there. But I also feel like if you completely cut that out and focused on Zakora, like not every story needs necessarily like a crisis, but the resolution is like the understanding of the principle you're bringing up. The understanding is that the Everfree functions in a way that hasn't, really been explained like we know there's there's bad magic we know there's you know whatever but and this goes to a point that i put later down like the pull spell cancellation of the everfree magic and the sakura's rhythm like it all ties into this theory of what in my opinion is like i don't know the om uh, om of the universe like if you're you're in buddhism it's the om that you say whenever you're uh, meditating and it's supposed to be the sound of the universe reverberating and reverberating out and that's where I thought you got some of your inspiration for the story and like I feel like understanding that truth is the resolution you don't necessarily have to have a crisis in a story as long as you're coming to some epiphany but that's just my opinion you know what I think you're absolutely right about the first part I could have created a crisis right there at the transfer of magic, and I just blew it off. That would have been a good place for one. Mm-hmm. I think it would have. Anyone want to add anything? Uh, sure. Um, I want to. You go, Nick. Nick, and then Vladdy. Um, that's another point where I feel like the story would really benefit from having a a, a perspective, and specifically from Twilight. Um, because I also felt there was kind of this. It's very anticlimactic where Twilight's... It, it's the first time in the story, I feel like, where we really kind of entered Twilight's mind, even from a third person's, you know, understanding of it. Um, and let me, let me find it. It's the first time we really kind of hear Twilight's inner thoughts. And then, to me, it there, there wasn't enough panic because this is Twilight. Um, and so even if it was inner conflict... I think that that moment would have come become so much more genuine if there if you had added some conflict in there, even if it was just inside her mind and she was fighting with herself. And that's a very Twilight thing um, to do. So that, but that's another instance where I think it'd be very beneficial um, to have her kind of be. We're we're seeing it through her eyes. Um, and then I think the other thing I wanted to bring up was going away from con- conflict and more to, I guess, resolution. Um, one of the parts that left me, I think probably the most unsatisfied when I read this, was you, you've written this really beautiful epic, right, through Zakora. Um about her life story and how she came to Equestria and, and the Everfree and stuff like that. And it's, we talked about it, it's the way of describing the rhythm in the forest and the rhythm of magic and stuff like that. And it, I have it pulled up here and um, she ends her, her tale and then it says, the did a half bow and a half curtsy to the princess. And then all I kind of, Right, because we're learning as Twilight is learning in this story. And then immediately Twilight just goes, I felt it, princess. I felt the rhythm of the forest in Zacharias's words. And that's really all she says about that. And that that was another instance where I was really wanting more. Because, it, I, I don't know, it was just like we heard this really long, beautiful story. And then Twilight's like, yeah, I get it. And to me, that felt a very... I, it wasn't... I. I don't know if it was you were just trying to end the story. Um, But to me, that was a part that I felt like could have been resolved a little bit more. Um, And that because the story just kind of ends there. We we have Celestia being proud of her. Um, But I I was hoping for a little bit more from Twilight in that instance. And 
her kind of coming to a resolution herself as well. Bloody and then clever, because bloody was next. Do him next, because I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> clever? Okay, just building off of what Nick was saying, um, I, I and I think this is the rationale um, for what she was saying, uh, or at least it's my rationale. Uh, the harder Twilight suffers, or the more difficult it is for her to come to recognize the rhythm, even if she realizes it's always been there, but the harder it is, the more curious Zakora becomes, the more interesting she becomes, and the more um, epic it is that Zakora can manage to do this without Alicorn magic. And so if you make Twilight suffer to get this knowledge, the, the bigger the stakes there, the bigger the accomplishment Zakora has. So I, I think that 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 is a rationale for why to do that. Um. Yeah. Just in, that, I. I would agree. Um. I think it's right. The the initial exchange between Celestia and um Twilight is you know in order for Twilight to understand she has to transfer all of her Alicorn magic, which we understand is a lot very powerful, and the fit kind of sets up as there's this pool that they all share from. Um, and essentially she's giving Celestia more of her share of the pool, um, and losing everything that is inherent to her. Um, and so, yes, the fact that Zakora can also kind of understand this magic without having access to said pool, I think is something that could have been really, um, kind of heightened by the interaction and having some some crisis even internally like i said in twilight's mind um and then with the resolution afterwards where twilight's like holy crap the core is amazing like the fact that she can this awe that somebody who isn't quote unquote as celestia says in the club at one point um has the ability to understand and access and to a certain point control this this greater kind of entity uh, yeah i definitely agree with like what everyone else been saying about there could have been the more um crisis at the trusting and transferring to magic like it even crossed my mind even though it's just a nice slice of life like wait a minute what if this is chrysalis trying to take her magic or something like, i think after all the fill-ins and stuff i would at least be slightly cautious about that uh, or you could even have the crisis be that uh, Celestia is worried that Twilight might not have that trust in her if you wanted to keep it from Celestia's point of view, um, like it was at the beginning. Uh, or even that um, Twilight trusts her, gives her her powers, but then even after that, perhaps she still didn't quite feel the rhythm, maybe felt a little something, but didn't quite fully grasp it. And maybe that could be why they have to go to Sakura's in order to do that rather than just a fun bonus trip. No? Yeah, the only thing I'd like to add in is I, I know you established that, you know, all the the alicorns have a portion of this, but I would, I don't know, in my mind, at least I would think like Zakora may not be in that pool, but yeah, she can definitely affect it. Like she, she is the only pony that lives in, in this inherently dangerous, inherently mad place and has learned to, to, I, I guess, strum those strings and be able to walk through it. And even if she doesn't have as much control as they do, I I, lo I would have loved if that had been, uh, like, at the end, like Nick said, if if Twilight had, had gone into that a little bit with her. Like, wait, so you, you can fill the strum, so that's how you're able to live here, and then, like, gotten a little bit of an explanation of how Zakora survives in the Everfree. Like, you know, uh, a, a little bit of a, a real life scenario of what that means when a sentient creature is able to tap into this and how it affects them. Because like Twilight and Celestia come into the Everfree to, you know, like feel it because it's a place where it clearly thrums and it's the strongest. And that would be a great place to show Twilight. But I'd love to also have gotten the perspective of somebody who doesn't just come in to feel it, but somebody who lives in that thrum 
lives in that rhythm on a day-to-day basis because she's got to have had you know some kind of uh <laughs> of an uh, awakening probably more than even Celestia and Luna and the other Alicorns have had just living in that day to day to day and would have loved to have seen that brought in and Clever's furiously clicking so I guess he has not been <laughs> Clever? Furiously clicking Um yeah I uh it just uh, it's something that occurred to me before and that I forgot about and I didn't make a note about and then Niles just reminded me uh, and that is that Luna like, where is she in all this? Like, she would be fantastically, you know, to to get her um, viewpoint. Like, if, again, if you're going to make this larger, if you're going to make this bigger, um, it would be uh, interesting if it was, um, you know, to get Luna's thoughts on being in the Everfree because it's her magic. And what does that mean? And is she connected to the forest in a way that no one else is kind of like Sakura? And uh, it's just a thought that I thought would be interesting to explore. It might not fit at all, but I just felt like it, 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 it should be said that because it's her magic and she got it back there, that it feels like there should be an intimate connection uh, between Luna and the forest. Nick? Um, it's, Less of a response to Clever, more of a response to what Niall said. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but... So, Niall, you were saying that you wanted to kind of know from a from a perspective of somebody who is living within that magic. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but don't we kind of get that insight in the, be, the opening part of the fic where we're kind of with Celestia on the balconies, how I understood that part. And we're not directly in her mind, but it there's Ilya wrote this beautiful description of the way Celestia feels the world, um, and the peace that she has from it. And that's kind of my I that to me that was the way that Celestia felt and the way that the world seems from somebody who is a part of it and a part of who knows and has experience with that magic. Yeah, I I agree with that completely. The thing is, Zakora isn't, she's not a bearer of this magic. She is a visitor that lives in a place with it. And I think the other thing that I I meant by that, and I actually have a a, a point, I guess I can tackle it now, if if that's all right, Scribbler, the archetype of the hidden hermit mage under dangerous magic. So I've seen this in like other... Uh, high fantasy and the one that sticks out the most to me is from the sort of truth series there's a character in there called Audi the bone woman and in that world there is this place where essentially death is in the physical realm like there is a wall where if you walk into it you're essentially walking into the underworld and you you die when you you enter this plane and there is a character called Audi who she uh, has learned to use bones of demons and other other things to live in a place that regular human beings in in close proximity to that would be cut down by by creatures within a day and she's been living there for years because over time and like she's she's lost a leg she's lost uh i think an eye because of having to learn how to live there but she understands that place at a level that no other living being does because she's made those sacrifices to understand that magic. And my thought would be, you know, it's not as extreme for Zakora, but she's living in a high concentration zone. That's the other thing, like Celestia and Twilight, you know, may feel it wherever they are, but the Everfree is like a deep concentration of this magic it's had a residence over a thousand years and even with Luna's magic removed it emanates and so it's like having a, a focal point in the world where if you go there it's the best opportunity for you to fill it and you can probably do things in that magical field that you couldn't do elsewhere because of the, the properties of that area and so my thought process would be understanding the core's view of it because she probably travels through that area and interacts with it differently than the alicorns and i much i would have loved to have had that explored um but that's once again that's just me suppositioning and that's also based off of other genres um 
that that talk about this and the the big thing that was a hint to me is when Ilya, you're describing this you use the word thomic thomic resonance and thomic induction and thomic translates to essentially miracle work like a thaumaturge is, is a person who cast miracles which you know that can also be translated into casting magic in a lot of fantasy worlds people see magic as a miracle because they don't understand it or they don't have access to it and so because of that that's where i'm drawing a lot of this from is like hey this is a principle of magic this place is a high density place of magic and zakora lives in it where most people couldn't live naturally and the reason she's able to exist here is because she has tapped into this and so it would be I, I just feel like it would have been interesting to see her point of view how she functions and for twilight to be able to understand you know she she feels this but she feels it differently than we do and that would have probably given twilight maybe even celestia some epiphanies because they don't interact with this force the same way she does Idiot? i just wanted to say of all the people who I feel I've hit the nail on the head, Nick did it. Um, that was my main, my very, my most positive self criticism was the fact that I ended this thing like chopping it off with an ax. Um, I, there, there was a reason for that and we'll get into that at the very end, maybe. Um, but it sort of ended not like a story. But like one of the cartoon programs, you know, they sometimes wrap things up in a hurry and yeah, it should have been elaborate. It shouldn't have been. They walked off, you know, <laughs> so I, I totally agree with Nick on that. Does anybody else want to add anything before we move on? Positive feedback, no, people. No. Thank you, bloody. Thank you, Niall. I'm good. But making me feel oh, uncomfortable okay. is half of the fun. That's right. The Play Doh on the floor tasted. <laughs> I mean, I was. What did you just say? <laughs> My cat smells like <laughs> Play Doh on the floor. It tastes good. I'm taking it you are quoting myself something. from a little, a little kid. kid being in the classroom. I mean, All right. I feel right now. <laughs> My cat smells like yeah. cat food. We feel English. That's impossible. Ooh, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can say I can sound like the dumbest kid in the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> but not the smartest. Okay. Short epic poem within a story. Is this okay, Olivia? That's just a question I had. Um, having never really encountered it, I don't think. Uh, it might have been some Greek stuff that had that, but I didn't know how appropriate it was. I thought it was, it was good. great. I thought it was really good. I feel like it was, I mean, uh, amongst the things that we talked about, there were digressions from the theme. That part was uh, clearly, it didn't feel like a digression from the theme. It felt like that was more on, it felt like more on topic than the other stuff was. So I, I personally didn't have a problem with it. It felt a little Tolkien-esque to me. Um, so yeah, no no worries there. Yeah, loved it. I, I just felt like something should have followed up. And we we talked about that, you know, it was like, there was this big build up with it. It was really good. And then it just kind of got fumbled by the ending. But yeah, no, really loved it within there. It was great. Nick? Um, to go off of that, it, it was so great. It kind of, the, the ending, and the reason I said before that I was very unsatisfied is because it, it really didn't do the 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 poem justice. Um, because I, I know we had talked about it. Um, you ha for It's really it's really well done to the point where right the the little the when there is a mishap that it's so noticeable because of how well done it is and then you know i got done reading this really nice story and um then it was just kind of the the resolution didn't seem to do it justice because of how well it was and how well it was written and how well it did fit into the story nice no? Yeah, the, the the best way I can explain it is if you're watching like a really well done anime and they drop all their budget on three scenes and then at the end they have to do like still frames, which I've seen once or twice. It felt like that. It's like there was this great build up and then the end was just so overshadowed by it and it didn't fall through, which is like it's a good thing, Ilya. You did an amazing job on it. But everything after it, it's like once you raise the bar that high. You, you could go down a little bit, but you, it felt like it dropped back to the floor. 
Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, that to me, that's just how how impactful that part of it was. Niall, you say anime. I think what you mean to say is porn. <laughs> My God! Wow! No, clever. Like I watch a lot of anime, and there's a lot of anime out there where you can tell, like, oh, they dropped three quarters of their million dollar budget on this one episode on this one scene because there's so much animation in there and yep. then the rest of it mm. just goes back to this very <laughs> flat like demon slayer is a good example of that the fight scenes are incredible everything in between is very very like there there isn't as much movement there isn't as much shading and dynamicism with it and it's because the fight scenes have like lightning running around the characters this insane shading and whatnot so yeah no it's it's not porn clever it's it's anime <laughs> i hey, said what i said fair. There is anime that is also porn. And die. Queen Slave walks the, line between the, both. It just be abruptly honest. ends. <laughs> Sounds like you would know a lot about that, clever. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> I said what I said. I am attempting to be a good moderator. Sorry, I guess you could say this uh, story had some horn porn. Hey, oh. It did. <laughs> Skywriter, I think you want to make an actual point. I want to make an actual point. Um, this is this is all symptomatic of a one night story. I have to say, I've written one night stories before. It's exciting. The climax is always rushed at the end because you're you're done. You 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 you've, oh you've, vo- you've vomited this idea. <laughs> Jesus Here we are. Christ. All of you are children. <laughs> Coming from you, Scribbler. <laughs> Coming from. Uh, in my defense, Coming I was from using. Scribbler. I was using. I was using only. For fuck's sake, guys, let him talk. I was using only the non-sexy versions of those words. Uh, you reached the literary climax of the story, and when you were done with that. Your impetus just it just kind of goes away. Clever, don't make me mute him. I'm so glad nobody heard what I whispered. <laughs> what did you say, Nick? Nick, that's what not you... fair. Oh my nope. goodness. Nope. And maybe you type it again. Maybe. No, because it'll read it out. <laughs> it's always Discord too. So that's mm, just it. Cigarette. This is. This is a this is a quickly written story. This is a this this is a get an idea out of your brain type story, and like I said, it's a, it's an interesting experience as a writer, but it's never it, every virtually every quick idea get it done in one night story that I've written probably could have used another couple days to think about it and say this needs to be tweaked, uh, this needs to be moved. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> this is a minefield. This is an absolute minefield. He sounds like a little yeah, goblin. Yeah. Great regression. You know, <laughs> Scribbler, should we just move on to the next point? I'm trying to help you. We've already tweaked one of them. I've muted him. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're all weirdos. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we all are. What do you expect? We're pony people. (gasps) Why else would we be in this call? Yeah, we're all pony people. To summarize, (laughs) writing a fic in a single evening is very cathartic, but maybe not always the most structured experience. Whenever he said one night story, I couldn't help but think of one night stand. Fuck off, that's what I was thinking when they, when the character said it, but I stopped myself. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna take a breath. The place of slice of life fanfics in the fandom. What is their place, and would each of us seek one out over other genres? Ilya. <laughs> I like slice of life pretty good. Um... I really don't look for anything in a story. It's odd. Um, most of the time when I'm reading a story, I'm looking for good sounding words. And if, 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 if the prose is sweet enough to drag me in, then I'll go for the ride. But I don't care too much about anything else. If it works, it works. 
Niall? So, yeah, I, I, I like Slice of Life when I like it. The one problem that I found with Slice of Life is it can be very broad because, you know, you have a whole range of characters and, and different slices of life that you can explore. Uh, but also, like, the writing, it, at least in my opinion in that genre, varies greatly on quality. And so I usually don't look for slice of life myself. I, I'm always asking for references or uh, for uh, people to say, hey, this is one I like. Because I've, I've tried three or four times just to like shoot into the dark. And most of the time they hit flat, um, which I found whenever you're looking into a very specific t- genre or into certain types it's it's easier to i guess filter that out um but that's just my opinion i really enjoy them when they hit well but there's a lot of them that seem to fall flat for me so it's not my favorite but it's great whenever it's done right that's my opinion nick um i would have to agree i when when i read fix i don't typically search by tag i just kind of you know you click on one you start reading it um but for slice of life or anything that would fall under that category, I would have to agree. It's one of those things where when they're done well, they're they're very nice to read. And when they fall flat, you just you're not really invested in them all that much. Um and I I think a good reasoning for that is um because you're you're really looking into the whatever character you know a slice of life for it that matter um you're really looking into just what their normal day is and sometimes trying to describe like your like when you describe yourself or when you're just trying to get in the mind of somebody who does what's normal to them sometimes it's really hard to portray what is normal to a person rather than throwing them in a situation and how they would react to it um so i i do have to agree i think i enjoy reading them um when they're done really well because you kind of come to an understanding or you're like no i can understand this character better um as opposed to it feels out of place when it's done not as well skywriter i think it's the sort of uh it's the sort of genre that lends itself um not uniquely but very particularly to fan fiction when sometimes all you're looking for as a consumer of fiction here is just a character moment with a character that you already know. And you judge it saying, oh, that feels like this character that I like. That gives me a positive vibe because this feels like a character that I like. I'm searching by a character tag and then it's just like, this is a slice of that character's like, yes, please, more of this character. I like this character. It's a lot harder to pull off if you're doing unique original fiction. But I mean, it has different expectations of it i think in a way uh, it is a even though a slice of life seems like it would be like just a easy simple thing you throw together it's actually really hard to do because you have to perfectly balance between um being bland and boring and, and losing people's interest or being overly dramatic and becoming something more either like a drama or adventure or something it's a very fine line, but when done right, it can be an amazing chance to learn like what everyone else is saying about like what characters are like in their day-to-day life rather than in extreme situations or to or like this one to enjoy something atmospheric and to just enjoy the calm and everything. So when done right, it can be really, really well done. It's just very difficult to do. So uh even like in acting, it's the same thing. Sometimes the bland, normal characters are the hardest to do. It's it's a big challenge, but kudos to anyone who even tries, let alone gets it right. Clever. I, I just wanted to say that I, I think slice of life equals low stakes. Um, it's it's basically a, it's a low stakes story, so it should still have all of the story components um, that. Uh, other more larger stories have there should still be conflict resolution there should be depending on what your theory of story is and i i i agree that it's 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 
to keep it slice of life, you have to keep it at a certain level. And I think that also, it also means you have to keep it at a certain length. You can't have an epically long slice of life because at some point, I think it would be difficult to maintain that balance that Vladdy was just talking about. Um, in terms of what, where the place of it is, the fandom, I, I think what was said about it being a character moment is, is right on. Um, I, I think that what's important in a slice of life is that there is some kind of character arc or development that does occur. It doesn't have to be big though. And that's the, um, and that's what makes it slice of life as opposed to something else. So I think it's the stakes and it's okay to like to read low stakes stories because every once in a while you don't want, um, the, uh, you don't want the world to be at stake in your escapism. We have enough of that in real life some days. Uh, sometimes it's, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just nice to, to, to read, you know, somebody having like an internal epiphany about themselves. That's maybe a little small. Um, that's kind of what I have to say about that. Okay, we'll move on then. So, I'm not sure who wrote this. I think it might be Ilya. It sounds like Ilya. Thalmic resonance slash inductance. Uh, no, that was that was me. Sorry. That was that was you. You sound like Ilya when you write. I mean, I use the exact words that he uh, he put in his fix, so that makes it real easy, you know. That would explain that. So, do you want to explain what you meant by including that point? Yeah, I mean, I kind of touched on it earlier, but I just. I really liked his his use of the terms and and how he he at least to me I read a lot of fantasy uh, how he broaches the subject of the magic especially the the little back and forth that Twilight and Celestia are having as they're walking through the Everfree about how Luna's magic affected the forest and they talk about essentially you know whenever you're casting a spell you're putting magic out and magic in and of itself doesn't do anything like usually it's just an arresting state in the body but whenever it's being forced out it's been given a purpose by the body it's going but then celestia poses well what happens if the body disappears and you know that's where the resonance comes in you essentially have a spell that has been cast out and usually after you're done casting the spell that magic or some form of it returns back to the caster and that's like the end of the spell luna is banished to the moon while her spell is still in effect and it creates a feedback loop where the spell tries to return it can't return and it essentially like has nowhere to go and it recasts itself is the way that i understood it and so over a thousand years you have this subtle recasting and and uh, permutation of the spell that imbues everything around it and that's why you know the the ever free forest ends where it ends like they had a whole thing at the beginning that talked about that like why is the ever free forest never grow further and never fall back it's just this this very defined border well that's the edge of the spell like the spell end ended its influence the forest can't go beyond it because it it ha doesn't have any feedback it back off of but the spell is continually going, and so it keeps that forest strong all the way up to that point. And I just, I really enjoy that. Like, I'm a huge magic lore person. Uh, it's one of my favorite things in any kind of a uh, an adventure or a fantasy world is how how is the magic defined by its creator and how does it work? Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that conversation and and how it was, you know, brought out in there anyone want to respond to that um i think my biggest thing just with the i i really enjoyed it and part of that is because i know what thomic resonance and inductance is um i kind of had to remember what it was um i think just my biggest thing with that was that for somebody who who is unfamiliar with you know stories that take place with you know lore and, and laws and magic and stuff like that it just it felt like jargon that was maybe a little bit unnecessary um that was my only thing with the the use of the wording i guess anyone else i don't nah. down to nope. <laughs> nah, what, if i if i'm speaking to a three or four or five six year old i'd speak to him just like a little adult and that's probably a failing in a story like this 
or I perhaps are using terms that are confusing. It's just the way I operate. Uh, Niall and then Skyrite. Uh, yeah, I, I think it comes down to a preference. And I do agree, Nick. Like, if it was a, a if it was like a series or if it was a multitude of books and you have a term in there that you're going to use throughout, I, I agree. Defining it, especially if you have a character that isn't used to it and explaining it is is the way to go. But the thing I do like sometimes is I like reading things that have a medium or high level of of terminology and language. And that's part of what I like about this fic is like it's in there and I'm one of those people that will totally go out and pull up a thesaurus or a dictionary if I don't understand things. Um, and I, I enjoy that, but I know not everybody does. And so I think like in the context of this fic, it was fine, but I can also understand that. Like I know people that if I, if I sent this to them to read, they'd get to that word and be like, what the heck is this? And they're not going to look it up. They're just going to be frustrated or go right on through it. Or maybe they'll understand, oh, well, they must be talking about magic. It's a magic thing. But yeah, I, I get that point. And it's always that balance of, you know, how much do you want to spend the time explaining something like that? Especially if it's just like a one-off, like that one conversation. Or do you want to define that because that's going to be a key point of everything you bring afterwards? I wrote, I needed uh, magic for dummies. Skywriter and then Nick. Not much to add, just, uh, I mean, it is a, in a way it feels like a guilty pleasure. I mean, words are fun. Complicated words are fun. Sometimes it's just fun to play with words that way. I have no, I mean, I, I know it can be alienating sometimes to a reader, but sometimes it's just, um, it's just fun to do. It's just like, hey, can I glom these letters together in an interesting way? And this is a very crunchy, interesting word. It's just, um, yeah, it's a style thing. Nick? Um, so I guess this didn't come across the way I wanted it to. Um, I also enjoy reading sometimes uh, prose that has like higher and medium level literary and, and, um, and diction and stuff like that. Um, because I do also enjoy going and looking them up in a dictionary and then I feel like I've learned something. Um, I guess, and then in response to you, Ilya, I didn't mean it more as a sense of talking down to people. I, I feel like it's less of a understanding of, you know, words and, and using in their meanings and more of, I don't know, I guess association by interest, um, because a person could have a really high, you know, understanding and, you know, know a lot and still not know what that means just because they're not immersed in um, hobbies or interests that would deal with magic, which is what psalmic resonance, I guess, is related to. So that's more what I meant by it. I was thinking more in terms of electromagnetic inductance because that's what I know more about. But sonic uh, works, too. I, I I felt like sometimes when I was rereading it, eh, maybe that's this technical stuff doesn't belong here, but I, I liked it. It's like uh, Skyrider said, it's fun. <laughs> it's why I don't mean, I, I did not mean actually talking down. I just meant those are the words I wanted to use, and I used them. That's all. And I think they belong very much so. I just think other people wouldn't under other people might not understand, and that's more the point I was trying to make. I very much enjoyed it. So sorry, I was distracted by cat. Okay, so I think now I wanted to say something. No, sorry, again distracted yeah, by cat. Sorry, one one last point. That just throw away the one other reason that I like this, and that I thought it worked, is because you have two of the highest learned magic users in the country, and if they're going to talk to each other. They won't just call it magic. They're going to talk in those higher terms. It's like if you get academics together that know mathematics and they start talking theories and the average person goes, oh, I have a brain. I, like, I feel like I'm about to have an aneurysm. I don't understand three quarters of what you're saying. Like, I have a friend that's a physicist <laughs> and he has another friend that's a physicist. And like, we have gone out to drinks before and he will go start going down this rabbit hole and it's like they're speaking a whole nother language and i know sometimes that can be off-putting but it also in a way explains the level of understanding or knowledge that the character has and that was one of the reasons why i loved it but yeah i i agree with everything nick says like it and what Ellie says it's fun to use words 
But yeah, I think the meaning of the words too also helps shape the understanding of a person to the character. And if you don't understand the words, it's an understanding that like, oh, they're talking about something that they know better than anybody else. That's cool. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I feel like that would never anybody just face it to entertain. Okay, so pulse spell slash cancellation of evergreen magic slash Zakora's rhythm. That was Niall came up with that one. So Niall? Yeah, I think we kind of covered this already, but yeah, it, it was like I said earlier, the whole the flow of the universe, the in and the out the cycle. Um and like I said, just in my my example would be like with the Om of, of Buddhism. It's just this really nice idea that this is a universal magic. And one thing I'd like to know as well, which I think Nick pointed out in an earlier part of the conversation is like, where do unicorns fit into this? Where do like other magics fit into this? Are they all like a part of the whole and they just don't understand it? Or are they like subgroups of magic and that doesn't mean lesser it just means like they operate on a different format but once again this is like what i nerd out about all the time so i know that it's probably not within the purview of the story but uh i i love that it explains the everfree magic and how zakora lives in it but i i don't know it just makes me want to know more about like the overall how that feeds into the rest of the world but I don't think that that was appropriate for the fake, so I understand. Bloody? I, I thought it was positive. I feedback. thought it was done very well, and um, having all that and how the magic was done and everything, and the cancellation stuff. Um, uh, if anything, uh, that that could have been another chance for um, um, a crisis and um, fixing for that would be like if. Something happened where Celestia was having to be busy at the ceremony talking to someone. Twilight's like, oh, I'll just go on ahead. And so she goes on ahead, but because she doesn't know the rhythm, like some animal comes to attack her or something. But then Celestia comes in in time, knowing the rhythm, is able to kind of just um, zone it out so that it kind of is just like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go. And then she's like, wait, how'd that happen? Be like, rhythm, my dear. For a second there, I just heard pure Granny Smith in the last couple of yes. words he said. Rhythm, my dear. Rhythm, my dear. Oh, rhythm, my dear. <laughs> what the fuck are you not voicing Granny Smith now? I, I just don't do Southern that well, so I don't know. I leave it to everyone else. Does a perfect Southern accent. Yep. Uh, yeah, I call bullshit well, on this, buddy. Bullshit! Bullshit! It's hard to maintain, at least. Apple. So this is this call we have managed to... This call we have managed to find that Vladdy does a brilliant Granny Smith, and Clever is Doc Brown. Sometimes. What else did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, um, we have been really good about not having too many dick jokes, so... Penis. Do you, do you want to have more why, dick why jokes? Why are you doing yeah, that? Yeah, do you want? Do you... Considering that the next point is Request of Scribbler, no! <laughs> dick fully editable. Dick fully editable. Dick fully is editable. fully like okay. Editable. For context Dirt. for listeners, because you wouldn't have heard the the bloopers yet. I was trying to write other contributors' points added here, please. Thick is fully editable, and I misspelled it. Or did you spell so, yes, it the, the way you the wanted? Dick is no, you fully definitely editable. spelled it the way you wanted to. Look, Scribbler, yeah. the the document uh, can be as long as you want it to be. The text can be as wide as you want it to be. It is fully editable. It is a fully edible dick. But it's the yep. content that matters. The one matters. who tells you size doesn't matter is lying. So, yeah, it is the content know, that matters. Yeah, it's, it's the not, content it's that not, matters. It's not the size of the thick. <laughs> it's how it's, it's you perform. use it. It's motion in the ocean. Yeah. It's its rhythm. Mm -hmm. So. And thus we come yeah. full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come in the full circle. Whoa. So clever. What's, what's the request? Yeah. So when I was reading this, um, I really, <laughs> there's the one line that Twilight says very sarcastically, I'm part of the Everfree Forest. And I just, I really wanted to hear you as Twilight say that. I mean, this sounds an awful lot like a previous fic we reviewed about ponies actually becoming part of the Everfree Forest, but... I'm part of the Everfree Forest. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Good take. Yep. 
Okay, so with that, we will go on to final thoughts. So we'll go back with Trip. Bloody, what are your final thoughts on this? I absolutely love it, and I'm still amazed that it's your first fic writing. It is the sceneries are beautiful, it's a wonderful concept to explore, and um, though there are parts that could have been improved and everything, I'm happy that you wrote this flawed version to begin with because I just enjoyed every minute of it. Skywriter? It's good. It has a lot of energy. Uh, a great first effort. Uh, I think with the... I'm not sure that this fic necessarily needs to be any different. Um, this, may, this fic may be the way it's going to be, especially since it's been two, three years since it's been written. But I think there's a lot of lessons that you can learn from early fix like this to make your next fix even better. Nick? Um, yeah, as, as we've all said, we re I really enjoyed reading it. Um, I think it offers a lot to, if you just want to, and we explained this really early on, if you just want to sit down and read something, it's a really nice just single one-shot read to kind of go through whether you want to be calmed or whether you just, you stumbled upon it. Um, but beyond that, if you really want to look into it, it really does explore some interesting ideas that I haven't seen a lot of other people explore. Um, and while I think there is beauty in it being, you know, not really edited or having it be from a quote unquote one night, right? Um, <laughs> It, there's, the beauty in that is that we, well, one, we could have this discussion about it, and it does raise some other questions, and it really gets you, I think, more to thinking about the possibilities and um, what is at, what is potentially, you know, available as far as the laws of magic go, and whether that be for the Alicorns or for Sigour and stuff like that. So it, it offers multiple different things depending on what you're looking for which i think is part of the the innocence and the beauty of it from it not being completely edited and stuff like that so Niall? yeah for for being the first pick uh fic this is really really great obviously you know as we talked about there are some things that can be improved on but for especially your first time in a one shot in a single day there's there are parts of this that just shine out so well. Um, and to Nick's point of like, it opens up the possibilities and you're exploring things like, honestly, if there's anything that I want after reading this fic, I want an epic tale, like a full hero's journey of Zakora leaving the zebra lands and going to on her journey to get to the ever free. Like, I want to know what all the land she went to. I want to know like the different magical things that she picked up on the way that help her like get there and what finally drew her to the ever free. Like, I love that concept and I love that idea because most of the time when you see Z, ah, you see Zakora in fix, she is usually in this very static role or this predisposed role of like, this is what we saw on the show. This is what she's going to be. And there, there are a couple variations outside of that, but I would love for somebody to take on the challenge of writing pre rhyme Zakora and just giving her a character and showing that evolution of her. Like, I feel like that would be amazing. But yeah, I, I absolutely enjoyed this fic and especially as just something to sit down and, and read in one go. Like, it, it's great and very, very enjoyable. Clever? Uh, well, normally at this point, we we uh, we address the final uh, thought to uh, people listening. Uh, but I feel because today we have an author here, it it, it it's kind of a two parter. So uh, my final thought to Ilya is, uh, bravo! Um, it's it takes a lot of uh, bravery and and courage to to share. Um, a, a work like this to a, a group of people, especially when you know exactly what's going to happen with it and, and the critique you're going to receive. So I just, I want to acknowledge uh, that. And I want to say that it's a fantastic um, first effort. And that, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's good, even if we don't use the qualifier as first effort. Um, 
I want to say that because I've, I've read enough stories now on, on FIM that I, I, uh, some people's third and 10th and 20th effort don't, don't, um, don't reach the, the levels that your story does. Uh, so I, I want to acknowledge that and I want you to know that. Um, we've already talked about areas that uh, you could look at and as what was said before, I mean, the story might just stay exactly the way it is. Uh, and that's okay too. To, to everyone else um, that's trying to decide if they want to um, you know, go through and read the story or not, I would say uh, if you're interested in writing stories or if you're interested in, in understanding more about uh, Zakora, uh, and if you find her um, you know, a character that you want to know more about, I, I wholeheartedly encourage you to read this story. Um, if for no other reason that the idea that's crystallized here is, is a fascinating one. And I, I, in my, it's already headcanon for me, and I, I think it should be headcanon for everyone. And if you're uh, interested in writing stories and, and listening to this podcast along with reading the story, I, I think um, that there's, there's a lot to learn for, for authors out there, period. Um, and so you can, you can kind of learn by reading and, and seeing if you agree with these points or not. So uh, to that, I'd say, yes, I would recommend this to read. Uh, to uh, anyone that that uh, is interested in Zakora or um, looking at the evolution of writing stories. And finally, Ilya, what are your final thoughts on the story that you wrote after this podcast? Well, I first want to say that um, Skywriter is spot on. Um, <clears throat> this was an idea I had while I was drinking my cup of coffee in the morning, fueled by a couple of cups and caffeine and idea bubbled in my head and I just sat down and wrote and by eight o'clock that evening I was tired of writing the story was done and that was it and I think that's the reason for a lot of the, the problems with it is that I just I wanted the experience of writing a story just I'm a tinker it's what I do and I wrote it and that was it and so it just sort of landed like it landed um I really expected that a lot of problems would be found with it, which were, and a lot of them were the exact problems I thought there would be, especially the ending, which should have been a bit more. But what I was really thrilled with was the fact that you said that you enjoyed reading it, because I had no idea if anyone would actually enjoy reading it or not. Um, I probably won't rewrite it. I may never write another story because I've done it and I've got a lot of other hobbies and I'm getting kind of old, so I don't know. Um, but I do want to thank you for all from the bottom of my heart for saying that you got some enjoyment from it. I think some is an understatement. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> here, here. Righty tight. Okay, so awesome. Okay, so we're going to spin the wheel. The people who are eligible are, if memory serves, Clever, Nick, Vladdy, and Skywriter. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Sadly. <laughs> wow! Poor Your Nick. enthusiasm is stultifying, Nick. Nick, it's going to be you now. Right. It is going to be <laughs> I know it's going to be me. Uh, okay, so I put your names into the wheel, and it's spinning. And it's clever. What? Nick, you dodged the bullet. Yep, clever hooves. What mm. you got, clever? All right. So, do you have one that's already pre-picked, clever? Yes, I or do. Just wait till tomorrow. I, I don't like the way you're saying that. I want to do killing all the right ponies. Ooh, Ooh. that's oh. good. By oh, by when, scribbler. When you, yeah, when you said it, you wanted to. Do you want to continue the chat? I assume you meant Skyrim. Uh huh. Yeah. Nope. Oh boy, another one of us gets wow. raked over the cliff. Yeah, he's scribbling on the chocolate block. block. You... <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Do you guys even know what that story is oh, about? It. It's a good story. You may not love it when you're when you've it. written so many, we'll you see. just we'll forget. See. No, 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 no. I know what it's about, and and. I am very flattered, clever, but I think you may have just done a terrible thing to the group. I don't think so. I think it's going to be good. Okay. All right, then. So next time we will apparently be doing Killing All the Right Ponies Yay. by me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>
All right then. So this has been Dan's writing words. <laughs> I regret not saying more this podcast now. Um, this has been Dan's writing words. I have been your very crappy moderator, at Scribbler. Desperately missing narrator pony to actually keep me in check. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from Clever Hoops. Goodbye. Goodbye from Ilya Leonov. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye from Niall. Until we meet again. Goodbye from me. I'm very happy right now. I got off the hook. Your time will come. Goodbye from Skyrider. All the best. And goodbye from Vladdy. See y'all on the flip side. You know what, it'd serve you all right if I skipped out on the next podcast <laughs> and let narrator to look after that's, you all. That would be <laughs> no, He would hate you. No. That's, yeah, he, that's he, verboten. He, you're, you're the host, Scribbler. You can't right. skip this any of these. This is your channel. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I think you did a fairly good I job. <laughs> it's more that next time it's my own frick. And I don't oh, think I oh it's okay. <laughs> We won't promise we'll be gentle, but it'll happen and it'll be fine. You'll live. <laughs> if you make, <laughs> if you Just make let the it recording happen. time earlier, I will be more honest because tired. <laughs> but clever, I agree to this only on one condition. Uh, well, let's hear the condition. You've got to read the um, footnotes at the end because that kind of explains the whole fucking thing. Oh, well, that's fine. All right, then. I tentatively agree. All right, goodbye from us, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.